Hello everybody, Raven Knight here, and today we're here with a very special video. It's a how-to video that was asked by popular request. For those of you who have not seen my video on Vlad the Impaler, I recommend that you go check that out. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, but during the video, I used background footage where I played Lawbringer, a very specific build of Lawbringer, the one you're seeing right here. I don't have a name for this character as of yet, but he was supposed to kind of represent an Impaler sort of character, kind of like this dark, uh, vampiric Impaler character that might fight on behalf of Vlad or could be Vlad himself. And I had a few people asking me, okay, could you show us how to build that Impaler Lawbringer? So I said, sure. So this how-to build video is going to be about how to build this Impaler Lawbringer, and if you'd like, uh, hit me up in the comments with what names you think I should give this guy or girl. We don't know what's underneath that armor. Hey, get creative, guys. That's what all this is about. So, without any further ado, let me tell you how to build them. So for starters, with the helm, you're going to want the Haldus helm. I liked this helm because of the style, the kind of gothic style, and the full face mask. I really think that works. Um, but then for the uh, chest, you also want the Haldus chest. I thought, yeah, one of the things that I labored under was, should I give him a cape or not? Like, should we go with the cape look? And I thought, no, no, that wouldn't look right, because I wouldn't see a lot of Vlad the Impaler style warriors having capes. I thought a more simplistic look would do fine, plus we'd be able to see the metal on the back, which I thought would look a lot better. And you guessed that you're going to go with the Haldus arms. I think that, you know, a very simplistic, true to form style is what you're really looking for. I also do, li I know that a lot of people say they don't like the spikes. I like the spikes on the shoulder, on the shoulder pads. I think that looks really neat. This is a fine, bulky, but still intimidating uh, armor. So I think that you're going to look just fine with this. Now, the weapon's a little unique. For the blade, of the pole axe, you're going to want the Rivalin axe head. You're going to want the Rivalin axe head. I wanted this one because it's the closest one that we can get to a Bardiche. It looks old fashioned and rustic. It's not super ornate like this one or this one or this one. Very simple, something that I'd expect to see on a battlefield, but long enough to be able to do some real damage. One of the things that annoys me are things like these where they're really, really small. I prefer them longer, like a Bardiche. So, yes, that looks better to me. For the shaft, you want the Belphegor shaft. Now, the Belphegor shaft is, I think, a limited time one. I think that that came from a specific event. I hope you have that one, because the Belphegor shaft, I thought, was the perfect one. But if you do not have the Belphegor shaft, there is an alternative. Scroll down to it. You can always use the Rivalin shaft as well. The Rivalin shaft will work just fine. All right, and then moving on for the spike, you want the Wiverndale Baron Spike. You want that dragon because he is, after all, the son of the dragon, Vlad the Impaler, so you want that dragon spike. So that's what you want to go with. So does that make sense? Let's look over it one more time to make sure you got it. Haldus Helm, Haldus Chest, Haldus Arms, Rivalin Axe Head, Belphegor Shaft, Wiverndale Baron Spike. If you get all that, you can build them just fine. So make sure you got all that exactly. All right. Now, moving over for traits, default one. Use whatever skin color you like. You're not going to be able to see it anyway. All right? All right. For ornaments, you don't need one. In fact, like I, it's like I said, the more basic, the better. It, it needs to be simplistic. It needs to be simple. We're talking about a warrior who don't need to use crests and ornaments to show off. He's dangerous with just what he's got. So you don't need any of that. Now for the head, you're going to want the paint pattern Heretic Disciple. This is where the season's uh, paint patterns come into play. So play the game now while this stuff is available because you get the Heretic Disciple 1 from getting the premium pass at tier 14. You want the Heretic Disciple paint pattern and you don't want any symbols or embossings, just the paint pattern. For the left shoulder, you want the Fallen Protector 2 paint pattern which you get in heresy of the relics event which i think is about over so if you don't have it i'm sorry you missed your shot um but you get that at tier four I actually it might let me double check let me double check that okay it's still going on for the next two days as of the making of this video so get it quick get it quick it's unlocked at tier four for right shoulder you're going to want the same thing fallen protector too so again get that get that get that for both you're not going to need a symbol or an embossing just that paint pattern for chest and back, no paint pattern, 
no symbol, but you want the might of Wyverndale embossing, which you got on year four, season one's battle pass. The reason why you want this one is because of the dragon on it. The dragon makes it look complete. But if you don't have that for whatever reason, I understand your next best option is going to be the sword angel, which you get at reputation 12, level 20. That's probably the next best one you could get. Or, if you really want to get cool with it and go for that Christian Impaler look, you can get the Whatever the Cost, which is a big old cross. And you can also get Scylla's Vengeance, which is a big old sea serpent. And you get that from the Scylla Illustrious outfit. All of those would be good options. I guess you could also do the Hydra's Virulence, but I haven't tested that one out yet. So, experiment at your own risk, but that's what you're going to want for the chest and back. And then for the standards, you want the two and two paint pattern, which you get right away at level one. So you should have this already. And then for the symbol, you want the Fallen Protector 1 symbol. It looks like a pair of hands holding a sword down, surrounded by a sun. That shows that piety that you want with a Vlad the Impaler style character. So that's definitely a good one to try out. Definitely get the Fallen Protector 1. Again, it's only available for a limited time, so get it while you can. No embossings. All right, so now you know how to build all that. Now, for material, you want the tar material, not the black iron, not the black iron, not the bedrock. You want tar because it gets that shiny black look. It is a shiny ebony black look that's going to make him look awesome in contrast to the red and black that you've already got in your color scheme. And speaking of color scheme, what's the color you want? Father of Understanding, which you can only get from the exclusive for the Creed Event Elite. If you can't get that for whatever reason, which I hope you would, but if you can't, the next best thing is going to be Heretic Disciple, which you can only get from this battle pass, so get it while you can. But if you have the Father of Understanding, congratulations, that's the paint pattern you want for Lawbringer, especially for this one, okay? All right, now, for the rest. For feats, I use Conqueror. I use Righteous Deflection, Protected Revive, and Ingenious Ember. I use all the basic feats with Lawbringer because, again, we're going with simplicity. We're not going with a lot of crazy stuff. I didn't want to use a whole lot of bombs because I thought that'd be a little too heavy-handed. I wanted him to use his blade more than his bombs. I wanted the Protective Revive because here's the thing people always think about, you know, Dracula is a monster, an evil individual. He's not. He's not. And I figured that his soldiers would show compassion to their allies as well. So I thought that would work. Righteous Deflection is just an all-around good perk, I feel like, since his whole thing is deflection. And Conquer, what did Vlad do? He conquered, man. He was a leader. He was a warlord. So I, I thought that would fit best. For executions, you want Backbreaker. You want Sweep the Leg. You want the Impaler, and you want Throw Per Veritate. When I was looking over all the executions to give this guy, these were the ones that I thought would fit, not only realistically with what one of Vlad the Impaler's soldiers might have used, but these are the ones that I thought looked all around the most brutal, which is what Vlad's going to want for his soldiers. Be as brutal as humanly possible with your enemies to send a message saying, we're not going to take this Ottoman heresy anymore. We're not going to take this Ottoman oppression. We're going to fight you off. We're going to kill you. We're going to defeat you. We're going to slaughter you like the sheep that you are. You know that, that I thought that these would be the best ones, and the Impaler just kind of went without saying because you know Vlad the Impaler so definitely make sure you have that for emotes I used glorious and recognition glorious because obviously you want to celebrate after a big win and he I like how his head is looking up like he's looking up at someone recently impaled and recognition because hey you know there's still honor there there's still some honor there and then combat, my liege, and you want some. I like the you want some the most because it's kind of like challenging, saying bring it on, you know, like I'll take you on. In fact, he's pointing the tip of his uh, poleaxe at them, almost like I'll impale you next, that kind of thing. So like that. Signature, I went with Wyvern's Pact because he might be drinking blood and I thought that's too good not that's too good to pass up he's becoming a vampire you know he's drinking the blood he's swearing his oath I thought that would work perfectly well so you want wyvern's pact and then finally for effects none for idle none for free roam but for execution give him the glowing eyes because if he is a vampire for one thing he's gonna have red eyes and two i just get this mental image of you tell vlad and his boys hey that's an ottoman heresy i start glowing mm, time for an impaling like so i thought that that would work very well for this character 
So that is just about everything for this guy. Not a whole lot there. It's pretty simplistic, pretty basic. And a lot of this, you should already have some of the color schemes and designs. You might need to look into your battle pass stuff to make sure you have. But for the most part, you should be able to make this okay. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And again, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think I should name this guy or girl. Again, we don't know who's under there. Um, I haven't come up with one yet, so, but maybe I will. And who knows? I might make a legend about him. I'll think about it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Take care.